Hello, my Oathbreakers. Today I have a five color deck based on a recent combo deck I saw. It is Time Stream Navigator, and I hope you'll stay tuned. That will move. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Sometimes I'm just hoping that OBS is going to work. So let's go ahead and get into the deck. It is a Jared Carthelian deck. He is a five color planeswalker. He's got five loyalty and three abilities. The first makes us a three, three Kavu that's all colors. The next is we can uh, minus three him and up to two target creatures. Each of them get a number of one, one counters equal to the number of colors they are. That actually turns those Kavus into eight eights. So that's something to be aware of. And his minus six is to return target multicolored permanent, or sorry, multicolored card from our graveyard to our hand. If that card was all colors, we draw a card and create two treasure tokens. Mainly, Jared is our commander, not because we're going to be utilizing all those abilities to their fullest, but we'll probably utilize the Kavus, because having blockers for our planeswalker is important. But moreover, because he hits all of our colors, and we will be using the five colors, as you will see once we get into the deck tech. Our next card in the deck will be our signature spell, and it is... Oh, again, just praying OBS works most of the time. And it is Polymorph. We want to Polymorph our Kavu, or our... Um, one of our other tokens we'll create off of a card in order to hit Time Stream Navigator. Once we're set up with Time Stream Navigator, there's a way to take infinite turns, but we do have to first get it in play. So this is part of the combo that is the combo deck. Next, we have Samut Tyrant Smasher. She is two and two Gruel. She gives all of our creatures haste, and if we minus one, her target creature gets plus two plus one and gains haste until the end of turn, and we scry one. Samut's so mostly in here because she provides haste. Getting time stream navigator down is not as important as using its ability the same turn. If we play it and have to wait a turn for it to be unaffected by summoning sickness, we probably will dismiss the boat and lose out our opportunity. Next, we have Sarkhan the Masterless for three and two red. He is a Planeswalker with five loyalty. Whenever a player attacks us or a Planeswalker we control, each dragon we control is going to deal one damage to that creature. His plus one turns all of our Planeswalkers into four, four flying red dragons to end of turn, which should not be looked down on. Sarkhan, in his own odd way, and Jared and his Kafus is a great way for us to win. Once we have infinite turns, making an infinite board state of dragons or planeswalkers that are 4-4 dragons or 8-8 kavus really will help us close out a game. Tyvar Jubilant Brawler costs 1, a red, and a green. He gives all of our creatures haste. If we pay 1, we can untap up to one target creature, and if we minus 2, we mill 3 cards, and then we, we may return a creature card mana value from 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. There are actually two creatures in the deck, and one of them we really want to be careful, because if it enters play, we want to play the backside, and that's part of the problem. So I'm still tooling with this deck, so if you guys have an idea for that, let me know, but I'll certainly bring it up. Eska, God of the Tree, is part of our combo that lets us go infinite, but not this side. The tap add one man of any color, and our legendary creatures we control have vigilance is... Definitely wonderful, but what we actually care about is the Prismaric Bridge. It is, you know, <laughs> five color uh, legendary enchantment, which is why we're running Jared. At the beginning of our upkeep, we can reveal cards from top of our library, library until we reveal a creature or planeswalker card. And we put that card on the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of our library in any order. Eska in the Prismaric Eska and Time Stream Navigator are the only creatures in the deck. We want to play the Prismaric Bridge, get it out of the deck, and then use Time Stream to get our infinite turns. And you'll see why in a second. Time Stream Navigator, our combo piece, costs one and blue. It's a one-one with a send. So if we have ten or more permanents, we have the city's blessing. If we pay two and two blue and tapper, we can put her on the bottom of our library and take extra turns after this one. We can only activate this ability if we have the city's blessing. So we get her into play. 
then for a couple turns, you know, if we want to, we can be sacrificing tokens to polymorph to keep taking extra turns until we can't afford polymorph anymore. But really we want to get the prismatic bridge down because then every turn it's going to pull her off the bottom of our library, put her into play, and we can take the turn again. And we can keep doing that until we've built up a board state or a viable win condition, if that makes any sense. So if you haven't seen that, that's, that's the deck. Everything else from there is just gravy. So I'm going to go through the gravy a little bit quickly just to keep the video short. We've got Cultivate to get us lands. Dam to clear the board whenever we're not ready. This is to uh, protect our planeswalkers, but also to uh, keep us from losing before we're ready to get our combo out. Demonic Tutor to go and fetch Prismatic Bridge or Time Stream, whichever one you're missing. Usually I would use the tutors to go get Eska uh, because you don't want her to show up on the wrong side. Farseek to get lands into play. This will get us our non-forced lands, which is really important since our Commander and Prismatic Bridge both require five colors. Hour of Promise lets us search our library for some lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped. And then if we control three more deserts, we create uh, two, two, two black zombies. I can't remember if I put deserts in the uh, land base, but it is an option. Idealic Tutor will get us an enchantment card, reveal it, put it into our hand. Kadama's Reach gets us lands. Mass Polymorph will let us sacrifice all of our tokens to go get the creatures in our library and put them into play. Uh, this is just basically a backup for Polymorph. That's pretty much it. Is It is just a backup. Nature's Lore gets us a forest. Ponder lets us look at the top three cards of our library, put them back in any order, and then shuffle, and then we draw a card, so this will let us control a draw. Clear Dane lets us scry two and then draw a card. Supreme Verdict will destroy all creatures, and it can't be countered. Anguished Unminking costs one a white and a black. You exile target non-land permanent, and end you lose three life, but this will hit any permanent. A lot of the removal in this deck is any permanent because I want to be able to hit problematic planeswalkers, problematic creatures, problematic enchantments, anything that can stop our win condition. Beast Within for the same reason. Chaos Warp, again, same reason. Chaos Warp also kind of does a reasonable facsimile of um, Polymorph, but not good enough for what we need because it's just going to get us the random card off the top. So we don't know if we'll get what we need. If we've tutored the card we need to the top, though, we can use this to kill a token to put it right into play. So there's a thought. Counterspell, Dash Hopes, which is the black counterspell that people can counter if they pay five life. Enlightened Tutor, Generous Gift, just more removal. Vampiric Tutor, tutor. Arcane Signet will tap for any color we need. Chromatic Lantern will tap for any color we need, and it makes our lands tap for any color we need. Commander Sphere taps for any color and can get us a draw if we desperately need it. Expedition Map will let us get the right land we need at the right time. Felwar Stone is, well, Felwar Stone. Uh, Sphere of the Sun is another one of those artifacts that can tap for any color of mana we need, but only three times. The reason I run this is it's a two cost, which means I can use it early. Swiftfoot Boots will give a creature hexproof in haste. Ghostly Prism says creatures can't attack you unless their control pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. This is one of those enchantments we'll probably run and fetch for. We want to pillow four up a little bit until we're ready to win the game. Mass Hysteria gives all of our creatures haste. Propaganda, it works like Ghostly Prison. And then into the land. So we've got Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Forest, Island, Mountain, Plains, Swamp, and that's it. Uh, it might seem weird that I went just with basics there. You can do whatever you need to. I find if you really want to tune this deck and have it work really good every single game, then what you need to do is probably spend on good shock lands and good dual lands and and get there but for now i just wanted to get the deck together why the combo was still fresh in my head i had seen it as a uh an eska commander deck i'm like is that playable in oathbreaker so this was my attempt i hope you guys think it was uh if it makes it playable let me know in the comments below and also any suggestions you have to improve the deck i would love to hear 
like, share, and comment if you've made it this far, and have a great day, and thanks for dropping by.